Okay. All right, so this is Real Estate Mindset. And uh, this class is predominantly for new agents. The class that I'm gonna be teaching at the end, which is all about team building, is going to be for the people who are thinking about taking that next step and starting a team. But this class here is for new agents uh, or people that are, have been doing 10 or less a year and want to do more. Uh, if you're content at 10 a year, this is probably not going to apply to you because uh, I don't really seek balance. So um, should you work in real estate? The worst reasons to get into real estate are right here. Um, the first one is I wanna be my own boss. Now anyone who's had any success at all in real estate understands that at any given time you have 20 to 30 bosses. You don't have one boss and it is yourself. And if you think about real estate that way, you're not gonna be around for very long. Um, the second is uh, I wanna work when I wanna work. Could you find a worse career? In, in my first year, I, I would get up from the dinner table to go uh, do showings. Um, when I, I'd leave my wife and my kid and I would just go. And we're gonna figure out ways around that and that's something that we're gonna talk about here today is how to find a little bit of a balance without scaring off your clients. I feel like we've uh, entered a disco. <laughs> um, so, and the, the, the third is I want time off. People get into this career thinking that somehow they're gonna be vacationing a lot. That's just not the right place to start. Now, negative people, <laughs> ain't nobody got time for that. And I think that I'm probably in everybody's way over here. Is it still working here? It is not. So I'm gonna have to find a way to figure this out with the Apple TV. That's okay, it's just a cell phone. Okay, am I still? Okay, all right. Okay, it's right here, don't move. Um, so should you work in real estate? We covered that. Negative people. So the biggest myth that people will tell you that is their own issue is that you will not make money in your first year. That's a horrible thing to tell a new agent. Don't plan on making any money your first year. And my second month, I opened up seven escrows. Um, and, and it was the kind of thing to where it was just work. I didn't have a sphere. And everybody that, that looked at the fact that I opened up seven escrows was like, you must have known a lot of people. I was like, all my friends are Lance Corporals and Corporals in the Marine Corps. They can't afford a house. <laughs> and they're all going right back to Afghanistan. Um, so really, um, just don't let people neg you out. If they didn't do any business their first year, that's on them. That has nothing to do with you. Um, if you work, you will do business. It's as simple as that. Uh, don't ever let anyone put your neg their negativity on you. There's a lot of that in every real estate office where people just kind of sit around getting negative. Oh man, I only had three people at the open house. Why didn't you convert one of them? If you just get one person that shows up at your open house and you are on a terrible split, you're making five or $6,000 off of that, right? So you know, don't, don't, uh, don't let people push their negativity on you, making sure that we're still going here. Surround yourself with the right people or no one at all. It's okay to not have friends around you in real estate it's okay to not have people holding you accountable. I look at it like going to the gym. And look at me, I put on like 25 pounds in the last two years. Don't look too closely. But uh, I look at it like going to the gym. When you wake up early and you say, hey, I'm gonna go to the gym at five o'clock in the morning by myself. The only excuse that you have for not getting up at five o'clock in the morning is you were too lazy. But if you have a workout partner who's like, ah, oh, you know what, not today. I'm, I have the tummy troubles. That's on them. Uh, and then they're bringing it into your life. So. Look at getting into real estate, like starting out working at the gym, is uh, you're, you're probably gonna have to do it on your own. If you do have the right people around you, and quite honestly, you will find great people. When I, got, when I opened my seven escrows in, the, in my second month in real estate, I would r literally get in my car and speed down to the office on my cell phone, no, I'm just kidding, speed, <laughs> with my headset on, and I would go in and I would talk to everybody in the office at Tarbell, and I would say, how do I write a contract? And Arinda knows this, Rick helped me out a lot in the beginning of my career. Um, there's a lot, Jennifer Lucas was great to me in, in the beginning of my career. Like, oh, there's a lot of people out there that were at Tarbell that helped me, and those were the right people. Uh, the negative people are the people that the second that you start farming, they're gonna start talking crap about you. And we'll talk about that more later. But don't let people hold you down. If other agents are negging you out, leave. If you have a broker that's negging you out, leave. 
You don't have to stick around in like an abusive relationship with your broker or with a negative office. If they're not doing it for you, somebody else will. I know that there's a lot of very talented brokers in this city. You don't have to stick around with somebody who's going to tell you that you can't do something. Um, you can do it. You can do it. <laughs> hint, hint. Uh, you don't have to be loyal to anyone that isn't loyal to you. That's the biggest mistake that I see a lot of people going right. Like, it's like the abusive boyfriend who's like, well, I can't leave. He's got my CDs. <laughs> you don't owe them anything, okay? You need you, and you don't need anyone else. Now, here are some great services that I like. If you want to take out your cell phone and take a picture of this, these are the people that I work with. Uh, I work with Anthony Andre at Tycor Title. He's that big, handsome guy in the back. Um, Generations Escrow uh, with Kristen Gable. Um, I also, so I, I jumped around with a lot of different escrow companies. I've jumped around with a lot of different lenders. These are the people that I work with now. Uh, I also work with Erica De Los Reyes at Lawyer's Title for, uh, for escrow. My home inspector is Matt Burnell. Uh, NHD, I just started working with Megan Whitmore. She's phenomenal. Uh, very talented and uh, super responsive. Um, home warranty, I've always worked with Nikki Arango. So for the whole two years that I've been doing this, I've been working with Nikki, and Nikki has been phenomenal, uh, not just for me personally, but for my clients. Um, my lender's Brian Decker. He might not take on new clients. I just, you know, he's never going to turn out alone, but he might not take on new clients. Uh, Lisa Toscano is fantastic. Uh, she really has gone above and beyond, and I don't want to tell, tell you in what way she's gone, gone above and beyond. That sounds really weird, but <laughs> she's gone above and beyond for my clients. I just don't want everybody to expect it from her. That sounds worse. I'm just going to move on. <laughs> so for photography, I use Bree Hunter. Um, I also use Daniel Marino. We got another great guy here in the back, Tyler Nelson. Um, and uh, we're going to talk about more with Tyler later um, and, uh, and whatnot. Termite, uh, I use Deanza Termite. There's, a, there's several good termite companies in, out there in the valley. I use Deanza. Uh, for security, I work with Steve Miller. He gives all of my clients a free system, which is great. Um, that they don't have to pay for, they just start paying for their monthly bills. Um, and then for solar, for solar, I go with Kirk Anstead. Now, the reason why I go with Kirk is there are a lot of dishonest solar people out there. Kirk has flat out told clients of mine, you are not right for solar. That's why I work with Kirk, is he tells people the truth. If you have a 1,400 square foot home, do you need 20 panels? You don't need 20 panels. But how many times have we all gotten in, into a situation with a hero program where somebody has a 1,700 square foot home with 30 panels? Yeah. Like, it's a great deal. I only pay $240 a month. I'm like, ah, nobody wants this. Okay, so, uh, all right, we're getting, I backed away too far again. Okay. There's no secret to success. I get asked this question more than any other question. What's your secret? What are you doing? And what I like to tell people is that I've developed the perfect pamphlet. <laughs> it is a one flyer that I'm going to give you guys at the end of this meeting today, and you guys are all going to be successful when you pass out this pamphlet. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, so uh, machine gunners have a saying. Uh, I was a machine gunner. Uh, that's, that's me right there. And uh, machine gunners have a saying, accuracy by volume. We're not the best shots in the world but we put more lead down range than anybody else. And so you have the ability to control a firefight. But without getting too far into the Marine Corps, accuracy by volume applies to real estate. If somebody tells you to do something and you uh, don't want to do it, don't do it, but do something. We all get so plagued by indecision and saying, oh, well, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Try everything. Something might work for you. That's what I did. When somebody said, hey, try door knocking expireds. That's what I did. I door knocked expireds. After door knocking 100 expireds, I was like, I hate door knocking expireds. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's going to be completely up to you what it is that you do. And we'll also go more into that later. Spending. You have to spend one of two things to be successful. And you have to spend both to be very successful. That's time and money. When I got into real estate, um, I got out of the Marine Corps with a reconstructed ankle. I could not, I didn't, I didn't have any money. I took out two credit cards with the last of my good credit, and I bought a couple of suits, and I bought some open house signs, and I just sat at open houses. Um, the, the thing is, is you have to spend something. And if it's time driving around door knocking expireds, if it's time on the phone, if it's time at open houses, whatever it is, you have to spend it. 
Now, if you just try to spend money, you're not going to be successful in the beginning. I've seen those people that uh, they put up a billboard or something, but no one has ever heard of them. It, like, that's a trap. If you, if you sign up for Zillow and you have one review, it might not work out too great for you in the beginning. If you're dumping $4,500 and you're showing up on a page with two other agents and, and the other two agents have 48 reviews and 70 recent transactions and you've got one, it might not, that might be why you're not getting as many impressions as you would like on Facebook. So just, or not on Facebook, on, uh, on Zillow. So just something to kind of be cognizant of. Um, prospecting. And this is really important. Um, you have to prospect. You're not, when, when people say that they're in real estate, that's secondary. Your job is to get leads. Real estate comes secondary. You have to be a fantastic real estate agent, but until you have clients, you're not a real estate agent yet. You're still prospecting. I still consider myself a prospector first and a real estate agent second. Prospecting is your first and primary job. If you get lucky enough, you get to practice real estate. Or if you work hard enough. And the harder you work, the luckier you get, right? Um, I don't door knock. I don't cold call. But Christian Stone, does everybody know who Christian Stone is? He's at Realty One, top agent at Realty One. That's all he does is door knock and cold call. I don't do it because I don't like to do it, but Christian does it, and he makes a really fantastic career for himself doing it. And he's like 25 or 26 years old. So, um, yeah, if, if that's the way that you do it, all I'm saying is pick something and do it like crazy. Um, choosing a farm. Nothing will develop more contention in your office than starting a farm. Nothing. Has anybody started a farm? There's like seven of you. I'm so disappointed. Get out! No, I'm just kidding. No, so I don't farm regularly. I still don't farm regularly. I farm like four times a year. That's it. Um, I don't farm more than that because I just look at the amount of money that I'm spending to the amount that I'm getting back. And there are different ways to brand an area. But that being said, the first time that I farmed when I was at Tarbell, it was like I shot somebody. Everybody was like, I, I walked in the office and like people were kind of like, like not look, a couple of people were like not looking at me. And then like, like what happened? Did I do something? Did somebody die? And I went to the back and somebody told me, oh, well, you farmed in such and such as territory. I'm like, oh, okay. It's like that. And it was, it was like that. And, I, and I'm not playing with you guys. Farms are not protected. I don't care who is in your office in what sort of situation, and like, and I respect Susan for this, but Susan has set up something on the board saying, hey look, this, this area is this person's farm, this area is this person's farm, but the reason for that is, it's to let people know, okay, if I want to try to take a farm more easily, it might be beneficial not to compete against somebody. But that being said, just because somebody says that it's their farm, are they working it? Nine times out of 10, if somebody says it's their farm, are they working it? No, they're not working it. They're just calling it their farm out of some sort of sense of entitlement. Entitlement is laziness. Pick your farm, and the best way to do it is be cognizant of how much one area is on lock. Now, when I picked my farm, there was a couple of very well-established agents in that area, but I decided that they didn't have it on lock. I wasn't driving down and seeing their listing sign every other listing. I was seeing their listing sign once every eight or once every 10 listing signs. Um, so I decided to set up my farm where I set it up. Now, the other good, play, good way to find out how to set up a farm is drive around in a neighborhood on the weekend. Drive around, and if you're not seeing a bunch of open house signs by a, that specific agent, guess what? That neighborhood is right for the taking. If you're driving through, you know, and I'm not gonna name the, the neighborhood over here, but if you're driving through this neighborhood, um, you're driving through and there is, there's not a consistent agent that works that one area. They always work different areas. Every week that you drive through this one neighborhood that's right over here, you see one, uh, you see a different sign every week. So yes, farms are not protected. Make a smart decision when you decide to pick a farm. If you're gonna be going up against, you know, for example, does anybody see me farming in South Temecula? Why would I not wanna farm in South Temecula? Who's the queen of farming? She earned it, Val Ives. Holy smokes would I have to spend a lot of money to compete with Val Ives. But for some reason, everybody and their mom wants to go in and try to, you know, South Temecula is the Hamptons. Sorry guys, it's not the Hamptons, it's South Temecula. But she has it on lock. And she's done very well for herself because she is consistent. So sorry to beat a dead horse with farming, but I just, I don't like the mentality that are around real estate offices about farming. Farm where you want to farm. 
That was a really long way to say that. <laughs> goals and accountability. Set goals, set tasks. Ten-year goals are accomplished with daily tasks. Everybody gets in this vision board mindset where they get this big vision board and they put it up in their office and it's a Ferrari and it's a mansion and they do all these big things. My, I just recently started coaching two weeks ago and he sent me something to make a vision board. And I just called him and I said, hey, I'm not making a vision board. I'm just not doing it. It's, that is not, that's just like, hey, 10 years down the road, eventually, I want to. But what do you want to do now? What do you want to do this year? What's, and, and don't set those goals super low. Be like, well, I really want to close three escrows. I'd be happy with that. Set your goals a little bit higher than you're comfortable with. And if you start, find yourself falling short of those goals, increase your actions. Don't decrease your goals. And that's a big thing that people, well, I'm going to fall short of 10 this year, so let's bring it down to five so that I meet my goal. <laughs> the right way to adjust your goals is adjusting up. If, you're, if you hit 10 in eight months, or you think you're going to hit 10, increase it to 15, increase it to 20. I fell drastically short of what my goal was at the end of the year. And I was so disappointed in myself. And my wife was like, do you remember what your goal was at the beginning of the year? I'm like, oh yeah, I just about doubled it. But every time that I got close to it, I was like, okay, that's not good enough. Move it far, move it farther. And that's how you remain hungry. Uh, so set a schedule and stick to it. It doesn't have to be the same schedule every week, but you have to make sure that when you're waking up in the morning, you're waking up with a purpose. So if, if at five o'clock, I wake up at five o'clock in the morning, every morning. And it's because if I wake up at five o'clock in the morning, I don't have a three-year-old and a one-year-old wanting to play with me. And I don't have to make breakfasts and do all that kind of stuff. I get a chance to focus on my business. And so at five o'clock in the morning, I wake up and I know what I'm going to do immediately because I've already set those tasks for myself. <laughs> Before, and I also have three boards. I have my daily calendar that I keep in my iPhone, and then I have a board in my office that says today, soon, and someday. And I make sure that I don't go to bed at night without marking off all my today tasks. If it is 10.30 at night, and we just got done watching The Walking Dead, and I wanna go to bed, I will walk by my board, and I'll look at my board, and I'll say, okay, I'll be up to bed in about an hour, because I cannot go to bed without accomplishing my tasks. Um, if you're looking, if you're looking for balance, look elsewhere. Okay. Let's see. I just got just messed up again. Okay. So branding, there is no easier way to put every sign to work for you. Every sign is work. Every sign is work. It's just a matter of who is getting the, the benefits from that sign. There's a huge difference between this sign and this sign. This sign is David Serpa. Everybody knows this sign is David Serpa. Now, every time that they see it, they think of me, right? I still have signature on there, but I'm in compliance. My broker allows it. This sign is Tarbell, and it's nothing against Tarbell. There are agents that are at Tarbell that have branded themselves, and they do a fantastic job. All I'm saying is this was me before branding. So when people were curious about my listings, or when they're curious about my open houses, the phone calls are going to Tarbell. They're not going to me. So the best way that you can uh, you either brand or you get branded. So if you're not branded, if you are not set up on your own, somebody else is benefiting from your hard work. Uh, getting lucky is not something that I practice. I don't do name tag real estate. I don't wear, everyone's like, hey, wear your name tag to the grocery store, you might get lucky. That's not me. I understand, hey, if you get one a year from wearing your name tag, hey, fantastic job. But don't count on that. Don't be like, all right, I'm going to work. And then you just go to the grocery store. <laughs> That's something that not to get caught up in. If you want to practice like getting lucky occasionally, that's great. But be careful not to concentrate entirely on getting lucky. Um, there's this new thing that everyone's like, carry around a sold sign for 30 days. Is anybody carrying around a sold sign? Okay, I, I want to make fun of somebody. But like you're, you're holding a sold sign for 30 days and you just walk around with it and you set up in a coffee shop and you have your sold sign out and it's like, I feel like it's kind of silly. Like it, it, doesn't really, it doesn't really do it for me. But for me, it's about work. It's not about getting lucky. Uh, utilize your time properly. Your time is valuable. And this is one of those things where we talked about earlier. You have two things that you could spend, right? Time or money. Your time is important. That's your most valuable commodity. When you can always be reached, people expect you to be reachable. Isn't that rotten? It's not like we have a home phone that we're like, OK, but only six people have my home phone. I'm off for the day. It is like everybody knows. I know he's seen my text messages. Guys, 
it's okay to establish boundaries. Jamie's gonna talk about this a little bit more in a while, but the most important thing that I did that changed my career and helped me get a little bit more balance is by unplugging for a couple hours. So every night, and I started off with just two hours, I say, Hello, you've reached David Serpa with David Serpa Homes and the Signature Real Estate Group. If uh, you've reached this message between six and eight, please understand I'm spending some time with my family and I'll get back to you after eight o'clock. I learned this from John Butler. John Butler, he unplugs at five o'clock and he's not answering any phone calls until the next day. Guess what? He still makes a little bit of money. But understand, <laughs> understand though guys, that like if you just don't return any phone calls after five, I wouldn't hire a real estate agent like that. Um, but it works for John, because John has branded himself to such an extreme that the people that want to work with John Butler want to work with John Butler. You have to set yourself up that way. I unplug for two hours. I let everybody know at my listing appointment, the first time that I meet them at an open house, I say, I unplug from six to eight. I will call you back by 8.30 if you call me during that time. And every time at eight o'clock, all my, all my voicemails, all my text messages, I know you're spending time with your family, but if you can get back to me tonight, that would be great. People respect that. Okay, I didn't get, but that being said, I didn't get here living a balanced life at all. Um, so the other thing, w wake up every morning and think, who can I get to do this for me? Stop thinking your, of yourself as an individual and start thinking about yourself as a business. Start hiring people to do things for you that you don't have the time to do for yourself. The first person that told me this was Adam Nelson. He's like, what do you do? I met with him. I saw him on Temecula Talk because everybody loves Adam online. Adam is... Adam is like, if somebody is looking for a realtor and they post it on Facebook, there's 35 people saying, Adam Nelson, work with Adam Nelson. Adam Nelson's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Adam Nelson baptized my child. <laughs> he has branded himself and he did a, a, a successful job doing that. So me being a new agent, and I, I've probably done about 20 transactions or so at this point, and I, I contacted Adam and I just said, hey man, whatever you're doing, I, I actually logged on to and I said, hire Adam Nelson, but if you decide not to hire Adam Nelson, hire me. I just want to be in the conversation. So, uh, so Adam told me, I, I told him, I said, hey, whatever you're doing, you're doing something right. Uh, I would love to work with you someday. I didn't ask him out to dinner. I didn't ask him out to coffee or anything like that. And then he said, well, what, what, is your serv what, what service are you with? Are you with escrow? And, uh, and I said, no, no, I'm actually, I'm just a real estate agent. agent. And uh, just, I, I'm a real estate agent. And he said to me, he said, well, hey man, you want, you want to get together and grab, uh, grab some breakfast? And so we, he sat down with me for breakfast. And I'm sitting down with this guy who I feel like is like a total, he is a total rock star, but he told me, he said, what are you getting ready to do after this? And I said, I'm getting ready to go hang flyers. I have a fused ankle, it's reconstructed. Every time that I hang flyers, my ankle swells up. And I'm not kidding, it's disgusting. It's really gross. It's sick. Okay, so, uh, so I told Adam, I said, yeah, I'm getting ready to go hang flyers. He tells me, David, why are you going to go hang flyers? What is your time worth? Are you, worth $10, are you worth $10 an hour? And I said, I'm worth a little bit more than $10 an hour now. He goes, pay somebody to do that for you. That frees you up to prospect. So start thinking about yourself as a business and not just a real, not, not just a real estate agent. You guys are all business owners. Congratulations, you guys made it. Okay, time off, don't do it. I'm not kidding. <laughs> don't do it, don't do it. No, pe people, uh, they always, oh, I'm going on vacation. And I'm like, why are you going on vacation? Don't do it. I've been on vacation like eight years, but I'm weird. I've got two kids. All right, uh, brokers. Uh, so I'm going to touch on brokers here. I'm going to ruffle some feathers. Um, who's all a broker? I'm sorry, but here I go. Okay, don't be an abused spouse. We talked about this. You do not, you don't need your broker. They need you. The first time that I saw that, I was sitting in a, in a room with Adam Nelson. I was like, hey, man, you should come to Exit. And he sat down and he was talking to Jason. The next time they didn't let me in the room because I was just watching it. I'm like, whoa, you just said that. He, he, told the J, he told Jason, Jason says to him, he goes, well, hey, look, this is what we're going to start you out at. And he goes, no, 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 what are you going to start me out at? Because I know what you do for everybody else. What are you going to do for me? And I was like, what? And he goes, I know how this works. You got to understand, I've been in this business for 18 years. You need me? I don't need you. And all of a sudden, this red cape appeared on the back of Adam. <laughs> I was like, he's a superhero. So, uh, so the next time that, I, that, that uh, my manager came in and sat down with Adam, we all sat down together at the table and I'm getting ready to watch it. He goes, hey, David, can you leave the room? Because he knew what was getting ready to happen. Adam was getting ready to have his way. <laughs> so, so he asked me to get out. So I got out. 
but I knew. Um, so, hey, it's your money. It's your money. You're the one out working for it. You're the one out holding open houses. You're the one making the phone calls. If somebody says, hey, we're going to start you off at 70%. Okay, justify why you're taking 30% of my money. Now, there are, there are brokers out there who will give you a lot for your money. And I understand that. Joseph Onello is a perfect example. He says, hey, at Keller Williams, I get a lot for being at Keller Williams. Their referral program that they have for me um, makes it so that I get you know, three or four or five of these, how many of these, six of these a year. And so it justifies the split that I'm paying to Keller Williams. And I'm, so I'm like, okay, cool, more power to you. Justify the money that you're paying your broker. That's all I'm gonna say about it. justify. Whether it's leads or whether it is uh, you know, support or whether you are able to reach them at ungodly hours, whatever it is, justify the 30%, the 20%, the 10%, the 5%, however much money you are giving to your broker, justify it financially to yourself because it's your money. It is your money, however you wanna cut it. At the end of the day, they're hiring you. Now there are people out there who say, well, my broker gives me three referrals a year or three, three or four referrals a month at 50%. And so I make more money than I would make by myself. I'm like, hey, cool. Awesome, good, great. If that's good for you and you don't wanna be out prospecting, they're real, you're willing to give them 50% off of that deal, that's fine, I understand that. All I'm saying is be cognizant of it. If you closed 20 deals last year, if you closed 15 deals last year, draft it up, figure out how much money you gave your broker and then figure out if you can justify it to yourself. I don't like franchise fees. 8%, 12%, 6%, whatever it is, it's too much percent. Okay, 8%, an 8% franchise fee of, if you made $200,000, you just handed somebody $16,000 just to say that you're with that franchise. What? Is it that important to say that you're with that franchise? People will scare you into staying with your broker. They'll say, you need the brand. I was told when I was leaving a certain broker, look, if you leave the, I understand what you're thinking. You're thinking, you, you know, you open seven escrows in your second month, you thinking that this is gonna stick around. Understand, people think that all the time. They leave and then they disappear because people want to work with this brand. They don't wanna work with David Serpa. Okay, wanna bet? <laughs> so just be cognizant of that. Lead fault systems, et cetera, a lousy split is a lousy split. Why does the same broker that tells you you're worth 6% have you at a 70% commission? You're worth 6%, understand that. Now give me 30% of your money. Something doesn't add up, right? Now everybody's mad at me, like I hate David Serpa. Um, <laughs> teams, we're gonna talk about this more later from both aspects, but be careful when you are successful, people will wanna take advantage of you. Steer clear of predators. This is how I think of most of the real estate teams. <laughs> Ursula and a bunch of poor unfortunate souls. <laughs> If you're getting 25%, you're a poor, unfortunate soul. People that love sales gravitate towards real estate. There are three types of people. This is the minority. People that love people, that's the majority. How many of you guys love sales? Wow, I'm kind of shocked. People that love people. That's most of you. And how many of you just don't want to be bossed around? <laughs> that's not the right person. People that love people do well in real estate. People who love sales do very well in real estate. But you have to understand that um, you know, if you love people, you have to start understanding that you are a salesman, okay? S shake that. You don't wanna work in sales? This is Jamie right here. Jamie's like, oh, I don't wanna think of myself as a salesman. Like, I understand that. I don't want to think of myself as a salesman either. I like to think of myself as a consultant. I'm not pushing anything on anybody. It's home ownership. Who here doesn't believe in home ownership? Somebody almost raised their hand. <laughs> Who here, like, that's something that you believe in. We're not selling used cars. We're selling home ownership. That's a solid investment. They want to buy, you want to help them. You're the best thing that could have happened to them. That's what you have to start believing. I'm the best possible thing that could happen to them. They're out open house shopping. I always say, people who are selling their house go out looking for an agent. People who are buying go out looking for a house. The agent just happens. So aren't they so lucky that you're their agent? So when they walk in, aren't you the best thing that could have happened to them today? Because they could have ended up working with a bum. 
Um, whatever you have to tell yourself to understand that you're working in sales. Now, working with other agents, uh, who here loves getting that combative agent calling you up the first time about writing an offer? <laughs> Carl, you're in the minority, bro. <laughs> Should start referring business to you. Um, guys, you are in a 30-day marriage with these people, right? Treat your fellow agents like clients. Don't be combative. Get the deal done. And don't ever say we. This is the biggest thing that you could learn about getting the deal done is don't say we. Because the second you say, hey, we think you're being kind of unreasonable about your response to our request for repairs. We think you should give us $5,000. So dumb. What you need to do is you need to say, uh, hey, look, um, I completely understand where you guys are coming from. I, I get it. Uh, but my clients, uh, they really feel like it came in a little bit low. Um, we'd really like to get as close to $5,000 as possible. Is there anything that we can do to figure it out? The only time that you ever use we is when you're talking to another agent. That's we. We are we, right? Our clients, they're, they, they're our clients right now. You are not going to do one transaction in one year with the people in this room. You're going to do 15 transactions in 15 years. There are people that when I go out, when I used to go out showing houses, that I would show their house and I'd be like, I don't think I want to work with this person again. I'm like, doesn't it smell like pee in here? <laughs> it smells like pee. You don't smell that? Let's get out of here. <laughs> At the end of the day, you guys have so much power and so much control over helping your agents to make a decision. Why would I want to mess that up for me and my clients? So the, like, I use we all the time when we're negotiating. And everybody's going to, you guys, in like two months, I'm going to be doing a deal with one of you. Go, don't we me, Serpa. Don't we me. <laughs> I, my mindset is when we're getting a deal done, I like to say, hey, look, um, we're about $5,000 from making this work. We are so close when I'm talking to the other agent. There's a deal here. We can do this. My clients want to buy the house. Your clients want to sell it. Let's figure this out. Let's, we, me and the other agent, them, they, my clients. Who has clients that they just flat out don't like? <laughs> Liars. <laughs> I love all my clients. All of us are best friends. I have coffee with all my clients every Monday. Stinker butts. Be real with yourself for a second. Understand that there are clients that you don't like. If you don't have a client you don't like, you haven't done enough deals yet. It will happen. I have clients that I can't stand. I just don't like them. But guess what? When they call me, I'm going to be the nicest person in the world to them. I'm gonna treat them like, like they're my friend, like they're my client, they're my confidant. You know, we're gonna work through this together, right? You can't let them know that you hate them. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't, I don't hate them. I kind of hate some of them. But so like the people that call you, like, like if you don't pick up your phone and then you get called three times in a row and you're like, hello, I saw it the first time. I don't feel like answering right now. But listen, just chill out a little bit we are we, they are them, okay? Um, your commission, offer at least 2.5%. Guys, come on, offer at least 2.5%. Can we all agree on that, like in this room? Can we all put our pinkies together and all just like agree? <laughs> Everybody put up your pinky. I wanna see, I wanna see like 100 pinkies in this room. I will at least offer 2.5% to the buyer's agent, right? If anyone in this room, and we have a roster of who attended, <laughs> offers less than 2.5%, I'm coming for your pinky. I will cut it off. I will have a pinky necklace by the end of next year. Guys, go to bat for your fellow agents. I'm not telling you to list at 6%. I'm not even telling you to list at 4%. List at 2.5%, just make sure you're offering 100% to the buyer's agent. I understand if you don't think that you're worth it. That's sad, you might wanna get some counseling, but the buyer's agent's worth it. I go to bat for the buyer's agent when I'm listing a house. If somebody says, well, I understand. I understand that this is what you want, but if we could just offer a little bit less to the other side, no. No, do you wanna sell your house? Do you wanna sell your house? Trust that these buyer's agents are out putting gas in their car. Some of them have shown over 100 properties. Do you want them to show your property or do you want them to be so burned out when they see the commission, they're like, ah, forget it. Guys, come on, let's work together here. 2% is unacceptable. Value your time, but don't be cheap. I heard one time somebody tell me, 
if I, like he said, I, I worked at a, at a, as a golf caddy. Uh, and this guy who is a multimillionaire was walking down the street and he sees a penny on the ground and he drops down and he picks it up. And I look at him, he goes, what? Oh, because of the penny? He goes, I tell myself, if I ever become too good to bend over and pick up a penny, that I'll lose it all. I was like, oh, that's really sweet. But I don't think that way. <laughs> don't be cheap. You have to spend money to make money, right? Don't be so cheap that you cripple yourself. Pay that person $10 an hour to go hang flyers. Don't be so cheap that you hurt your business. I spent more money on my business last year than I paid myself in a salary. My tax guy called me back up after running all my numbers. I was like, are you sure that you want to claim this much money? Because you only made this much. I was like, ooh, I have to explain that to my wife. My wife was always like, how much money are you spend on your business? But that will come back. Um, if, you want to, if you want everyone to value you, but you use discount services, who are you? Right? I pay my, I pay my, all of, everyone that I do business with, I pay them more than they want to be paid most of the time, or at least what they want to be paid. I never ask Bree for a discount. I never say, hey, Bree, can you give me a little bit off this time? What a jerk move. I always pay people what they're worth. Don't discount everybody. Don't be a sneaker butt. Uh, I don't have to justify keeping my money to a broker. They have to justify taking it. We talked about that. Things that I wish that people would have told me in my first year, um, if it isn't in writing, it doesn't exist. Yeah. Buyer's representation agreement, guys. Like, for real. I don't make my buyers sign a buyer's representation agreement, but I am understanding that they might go out and then write the offer with their friend or their brother. I got stung four times in my first year in real estate for not having them sign a buyer's representation agreement. It cost me over $30,000. Why? Because they were pro-military or they were active duty Marine Corps. Every single one of them, all four of them were either prior military or were like, we love Marines, that's why we called you. And they worked me over. Don't get caught up in drama. If you do squash it, everybody makes mistakes. I got in a little bit of a Facebook beef with my good friend Tyler Nelson over here. Some of you guys probably saw it. And I put another realtor on blast. I was like, copying my videos. Guys, it's OK. People will copy everything but hard work. Adam told me that too. Love you, Adam. People will copy everything but hard work. Don't get too worked up in it. Squash the beef. Move on. I called Tyler up today and I said, hey, do you want to work this event with me? Just move on. Don't get so worked up. I talked to so many people who are like, oh, yeah, I don't really like this broker, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, really? They're great people. You should call them. Oh, yeah, you know what? I actually called that person. They're awesome. You were right. No, duh. Uh, cut negative people from your life. Activity versus results. Don't confuse activity with results. Meetings should be minimal and always lead to movement. Weekly meetings where you're going to get lectured by your broker for three hours about not farming and not holding open houses, yuck! I don't do it. We meet once a month on my team. We talk to each other all the time. But I understand these are independent contractors. Is anybody here not an independent contractor? You are getting yourself paid. Your broker is not paying you. Meetings should be minimal and always lead to movement. I hate weekly meetings, exclamation point. You are an independent contractor, exclamation point. Coaching, vision boards, networking groups, stop acting like you're, stop acting like you're working in work, right? You stop getting so caught up in affirmations. Stop getting so caught up in, oh, I'm going to go out, I'm going to meet all these other realtors for lunch. Guys, are those other realtors going to get you paid? Probably not. If they're, if they're paying you, they're a silly realtor. Uh, you don't have to be perfect, you just have to work. Perfectionism leads to procrastination, which leads to paralysis. So many times you, you meet somebody and they're starting a career in real estate, six months later you talk to them and they say, oh, I've been working on this really great website. I wanna make sure that I'm ready. When the time comes, I wanna make sure I'm ready. You're not ready, but work. There are great people around you that will help you. The real estate community is a great community. I have people all the time contacting me like, hey, can you help me out? Can you tell me this? Can you tell me that? Yeah. They're, are they at my brokerage? No. Are they on my team? No. But people will help you out. There are good people in this room. This guy over here who's over at the board all the time, he's a great guy. He's a good man. The reason why he's here is because you, you, you can say hello to everybody. You can raise your hand. The reason why he's here is he cares about you guys. He's involved in the real estate community. If you go somewhere where, the real estate, where there are real estate agents, he's probably there. It's because he's tied in the community. People here care about you. Um, the only thing that you have to do every day is be better than who you were yesterday. 
Uh, I ran way over on my time, but does anybody have any quick questions that can't wait until the end? Okay, <laughs> then, uh, then I'm gonna bring up, it's not you? I'm gonna bring up Rob Morrow. For those of you that don't know, Rob was the top agent on the David Serpa Holmes team last year. Um, he is my right hand man, and he is the guy that we started this team together. The two of us started this together, and I'm gonna talk more about him in the team meeting, but everybody welcome Rob to the stage here.